All right, welcome everybody to another BDA film analysis. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at Mikey Garcia. Now, the reason why we're taking a look at Garcia is because normally when people look at him for the first time, they look at his flat feet, they look at his hand speed, which isn't particularly impressive. You know, he's not out there throwing five, six, seven punch combinations. He's not fighting with his hands down or using his upper mo body movement excessively in order to dodge punches. So people immediately think, oh, well, he's... He's not that good. I mean, what, 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 what is with this guy? What is this guy? You know, he's like, how come he's winning so many runs? And that's the thing. Then you end up watching him and you see how guys can land on him and how he does whatever he wants with his opponents. And you start going, well, why is he so good? Well, that's the thing. Hand speed impresses a lot of people. That's the, the main thing that people look for. That and power, punch and power. They're the two most impressive factors in boxing. But as we all know, hand speed or reflexes or foot speed you know or agility does not equate to great boxing skills now if you have great physical talent and a high boxing iq then that, that's when you become a dangerous guy but for the most part a lot of these quick guys are getting by on athleticism all right case in point adrian broner who is a good fighter don't get me wrong but uh, he's, he's relied a lot on his physical gifts so that's what we're going to take a look at Mikey Garcia's fight against Adrian Broner. Right off the bat, I got to tell you, uh, this is going to be a, one of those film analysis where we really get down to the nitty gritty, the little details that make a guy good and make a guy a great boxer. All right. So we're going to just focus on the action that took place throughout three or four rounds. We're not going to look at the whole fight. Otherwise, we'd be here all night. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so before we focus on Garcia, we have to look at what Broner tried to do in this fight. As you all know, as most of you know, Broner was the underdog coming into this fight. A lot of people knew that Mikey Garcia was a superior boxer, but uh, we really didn't know what Broner was going to do. Well, what he did try to do was he came in here and tried to use his hand speed and foot speed to his advantage. So he used a lot of lateral movement, which he normally doesn't do. He, he normally likes to stay in the pocket. Or, or, or walk his opponents down. And you see him here using his lateral movement. He also tried jabbing. And as you can see here, he did land some good jabs. See there, not telegraphing it or anything. He tried hooking off the jab. Nice left hook there, lead left hook. And he tried countering with his quick right hand. And it's a smart game plan because if you have hand speed, and there you see here throwing some feints, again, lateral movement. It's a, It was an interesting and... and um, smart plan because if you have good hand speed you want to try to maximize it as much as possible so hand speed shocks people it can shock your opponent especially if you're countering them every time it makes your opponent uh, hesitant right gun shy they don't want to throw anymore so you don't need to be throwing five six seven punch combinations like that you just have to throw one punch two punches you know in between the other guys attack and you shock him and you make him gun shy so it was a good plan from adrian broner but let's take a look at why it didn't work and let's take a look at Mikey Garcia's defense. Again, he doesn't fight with his hands down. What he does is he loves to parry punches. And like I said, Broner tried to come in here jabbing and moving. But as you can see here, Garcia, look at this. See what he's doing there? Just moving his left hand up a little bit. And he diverts that jab. And then his hands go right back into position. And let's talk about that real quick. Parrying 101. Parrying, you're supposed to parry the jab as if you're swatting a fly. Just a little wrist movement or a little hand movement up or down, it depends. And you bring your hands right back up. You're not supposed to stretch out your hand because if you do that against a seasoned opponent, he's going to see that opening and then he's going to faint with the jab and come in with a little left hook and you're going to go down or get seriously hurt. So parrying 101 is try to limit the, the hand movement as much as possible so that it, it goes right back into your guard and you can deflect whatever comes next after the jab, right? So that's what Mikey Garcia is doing here. See, they're just putting his hands up a little bit, steps back, and see, here you see Broner trying to find an opening, get Garcia out of position, but Garcia does not give him any openings. And um, Pauli Malinagi and Al Bernstein, who were doing the commentary for this fight, pointed that out. They said that it's impressive how Garcia does not give any holes. There's no gaping uh, holes in the defense. So you see here, Broner jabs, Garcia's hands stay up, nothing goes down. And there you see Broner with his lead hand trying to distract 
Garcia, you know, Garcia trying to make Garcia think that there might be a lead left foot coming or a jab to the body, like right there. And look at Garcia. He just dips his elbow a little bit inside to deflect the jab that never came. But he's still in position with his hands up and ready to counter. And there you see him again, great jab uh, pairing. See the runner trying to do what his hero Floyd Mayweather used to do back in the day, which is jabbing to the body. And that jab almost got through, but you see Mikey Garcia's hands, they're up, he takes a little step back, and he's still in, in his stance, close stance, nice and tight, ready to parry everything. Look at this. Boom. See, this is perfect parrying. Not overextending the hand, just controlling Broner's lead left and his and, and Garcia's left hand is still there to block a, a, a right hand if it comes. And look at this here. His Broner is gonna jab like about three, four times, nothing gets through. And he can move his head too, Mikey Garcia. There you see that? And here you can see he uses his feet too. He parries the shot. Beyond, see there, takes a step back, then Broner comes back with a second jab, and Garcia takes a little step back, but see he's in position to counter with the left, counter with the right, I mean textbook stuff. So right there, you saw Broner trying to implement his jab, and it didn't work, Garcia took it away, and he didn't even have to use flashy upper body movement, or running around the ring, he's standing right in front of his opponent, and just parrying, very minimal economic movement, really saving up his energy and ready to counter. So now you see Mikey Garcia throwing his own jab. See there? Nice tight jab. Oh, we're gonna see the replay here in real time. Boom. So we'll see what happens. First of all, let's look at Mikey Garcia's jab. Look at his left hand right onto the side of his head, ready to, to block any overhand rights very little telegraphing very good and he's really stepping into that jab see how he's stepping into it Bam! that's a shotgun jab right there and look at and look at Broner compare and contrast how Garcia reacted to Broner's jabs he was just pairing not moving back too much if at all and just staying really right in position to counter meanwhile look at how Broner reacts dips down pivots looks back see that like three movements right there he dips down, uh, he leans back first of all, leans back, dips down, pivots, and then looks back, expecting a right hand or another jab, and then moves away. That's a lot of energy wasted right there, for a punch that, for one jab, that did land by the way, it did land, so, you know, the, the investment there from Broner and the return, really not a good ratio. And again, see there, that jab landing, and here's the other thing, that right hand by the way from Mikey Garcia was really sloppy, but... Look at Broner's hands. Again, athleticism. It can make some guys think that they're better than they are. They, they don't expect getting hit with jabs. But if you throw a jab the way Garcia is, like right here, not telegraphing it, not rotating the shoulder too much, like some people like to teach you in the gym. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, you gotta rotate the shoulder, you gotta, you gotta pop that shoulder, you gotta pop shit. Just throw the jab like this and it doesn't telegraph it and it hits the guy and it pisses him off and it sets up the rest of your offense. So you see there, there's, uh, Broner took that jab, ducked under it. Again, another jab. And that's a, like, again, that's a shotgun jab. Boom. Okay, Garcia still in position. And Broner again reacting like a wild man. And we're going to see more of those reactions with the feints. So now let's look back. Checklist. Broner tried jabbing, it didn't work. Mikey Garcia uh, parried those jabs, blocked them. And now he's jabbing and he's hitting Broner. So that's two strikes for Broner right there. Now Garcia starts fainting. And look at, again, look at how Broner reacts. Running away, dipping down, very jittery. And look what he's doing right here. So Garcia faints as if he's about to throw a, a, a hard jab. The jab never comes. Broner's looking for the right hand. How do I know? Because he dips down. And see that he's looking for the right hand he's looking to dip down so he takes power away from the right hand and he's ready to roll with the right hand but that's a lot of wasted movement from Adrian Broner see there again very jittery 
You don't see Mikey Garcia reacting that way. And here we see finally Garcia going on the attack after, after fainting. And we're going to take a like, look at that in slow motion. Garcia jabs, or hooks, I should say. A little left hook. Broner leans back. He's Again, he's watching out for Garcia's big right hand. So he dips down, expecting to roll with the right hand. See how he rolls ever so slightly? So he dips down. But Mikey Garcia knows that he's going to dip down. He's seen that now. This is the first round, a minute left. So he's seen Broner dipping down all the time. So he says, all right, I'm just going to take a little step back. See his back foot, Garcia's back foot. Takes a little step back. Waits for Broner to step uh, to go back up, and you see Broner's left hand ready to tie Garcia up because he thought Garcia was going to keep coming forward. Instead, Garcia, like I said, took a step back, waited for Broner to come back up, expecting to clinch. See there, he's expecting to hug, and instead he's met, boom, with a right hand flush on the chin. And here Broner does a good job of sliding off the ropes here. Look at that, boom! But still, he got clipped. And here we see this shotgun jab again. Look at that sequence again. See, this is why I'm only analyzing three runs because otherwise we're going to be here all night. So <laughs> Garcia steps into that jab. Look at that. Nice shotgun jab, piercing the guard. He's punching through the target. He's not trying to, you know, pop a guy with a jab and step out of the way. He is looking to cause some damage and set up a right hand. So he punches through the target. Broner steps back. Nice right hand from M Mikey Garcia. Very tight right hand in a tight space. Throws the right hand, didn't really do a lot of damage, so he follows it up with a left foot. Now look look at how much, how he loads up on that left foot, look at this, whack. And Broner had that elbow tucked in, but it still got underneath it. Now I don't like this from Mikey Garcia, that his right hand is pretty low, but he doesn't care. You can't bat 100% every fight, you know, you're gonna make some mistakes in it. Even Mikey Garcia makes mistakes, so. So you see here Garcia calling the ring off, Broner still trying to use his lateral movement. Or Garcia not flinching back, still putting pressure always in front of Broner. See here, fainting, fainting, cutting the ring off. Nice job from Mikey Garcia. So Broner tries to faint him out of position. Look at how Garcia just stays right in the pocket. See there? Doesn't even react. He did put his glove forward, trying to parry the jab, but he's focusing on putting as much pressure, mental and physical, on Adrian Broner. And Adrian Broner is really running out of ideas here when it comes to this game plan of moving backward. So finally, Garcia corners him and decides to go on the attack. See another feint from Garcia, cutting the ring of cutting the ring of... Ooh. Again, stepping in with that nice... After he's cut off the ring, he steps in with that nice jab again. See how he pulls back Broner's face and he's blocking his view as well because he keeps that left that left hand in there. Now before the referee can come in and warn him about it, he pulls it back and he launches a big right hook flush to the flanks right here. Look at this. Bam! And Broner laughs. And he did that a lot during this fight, shaking his head and saying, no, that didn't hurt me, which of course we all know it means it did hurt. This sequence, gonna let it play out again in real time and then we're gonna look at it in slow motion. Okay, so what did Garcia do here? Faints as if he's about to throw a jab. Also, he's fainting. See how he's pulling the elbow back? It almost seems as if he's about to throw a left hook, but instead he throws a faint, a jab, you know, a fainting jab. So Broner doesn't know if it's a jab, if it's a left hook. So he leans back, he reacts to the faint, right? He buys the faint. Garcia again faints. That's two feints that Broner is watching out for. He's got his hands up. He throws a jab. Garcia dips down and throws a left hook. Very reminiscent of um, Johnny Gonzalez's left hook against Morris. Remember that? He dips down and then he throws a lead left hook. Of course, Broner, good job for keeping that right hand up. And he sort of rolls with that left hook. But it's, and then he's ready to roll with the right hand. See that? He rolls with the left and then rolls with the right. But nothing comes back. But now he's, he's on the retreat. He's watching out for Garcia's attack. So he just puts his hands up because he doesn't know where the punches are coming from. Meanwhile, Garcia comes back up with a jab and then he's going to dip down for a right body shot and then a left hook upstairs. So see, punches coming from all angles after feints to distract Broner. And then that left hook finally lands and it lands right on the, like under the ear, on the jaw. Nice flush shot. You can tell that hurt physically. You know, that causes some pain. 
maybe it doesn't wobble you or whatever, but it's a landing punch and Broner felt it. And again, here he shakes his hand. He said, again, more feints from Garcia, more conning of the ring, Broner reacting to it, flinching. And see here, he tries to jab, tries, tries to get some relief from the pressure. But again, Garcia just parries it, steps back a little bit and keeps back putting pressure. Lead, left foot, right hand, and then a left uppercut and then a jab. So see Broner trying to use his lateral movement. Okay, so what happened here? Broner again trying to jab to the body. Good, yeah, it's a good idea, good tactic. Trying to confuse uh, Garcia, trying to make him uh, second guess himself and wonder where the punch is going to come from. So he does a good job of jabbing to the body, trying to really jab that solar plexus, and he pulls back and he gets caught. Now let's look at in slow motion. What is Broner doing wrong here? Well, first of all, and this isn't his fault, Garcia, you can tell, very good counter puncher, probably works this all the time in the mitts with his trainer and brother Robert Garcia. And he probably expected Broner jab into the body too. So they probably practice on countering that jab to the body. So Broner very close. He tries to use his reflexes and dip, lean back, but he's leaning back and look what he's doing with his hands. Overextending his hands. His chin is wide open. He's also leaning back with the chin almost i mean it doesn't even look like he's trying to tuck it in and i don't know if you remember but this is the same mistake that he did against marcus maidana in the second round first and second rounds and it was in the second round where he got clipped and dropped because maidana fainted as he was about to go to the body and Broner did the same movement overextended his hands and got clipped now here he gets clipped and again the punch it looked worse in real time than it did in slow motion, even though he did get touched. But look what happens. It looks like it was a big punch. And look at this guy here, the judge. He took notice of that punch because it seemed worse than it was. So that right there is already letting the judges know that Mikey Garcia is landing some hurtful punches, even if they're not really, you know, as big as, 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 the, crowd, as the crowd believed they were. So you see here Garcia going back with the feints and the jabs. So what happened here? Look at this. Mario Garcia steps in with a jab, Broner leans back, again dips down, looking for the right hand, trying to roll with it, but Garcia, smart, jabs again, because he knows Broner is just dipping with that right hand, jabs again, gets a little too close, and Broner again dips down, expecting the right, he's trying to, you know, he's expecting Garcia to keep coming forward so that Broner can, can clinch him, so what does Garcia do? Look at his uh, back foot. Steps to the side in order to cut off the ring and steps back with the lead left, with the lead foot afterwards. So he avoids getting clinched. And look at Broner. What the hell is he doing here? Like he's dips, he dips down, dips back up, and then counters. He's not even looking, by the way. He's expecting a punch. He's looking at the, the crowd or something. Very jittery from Broner. This is Broner second guessing himself. This is Broner reacting to the feints. Uh, this looks a lot like when a, f a guy steps into the ring for the first time to spar and the more seasoned guy just throws a couple of feints and the guy's on the ropes reacting to every little movement and panicking. This is Broner panicking. See that? He's not as composed as he should be or as he usually is against you know, inferior opposition. And there, what happened here? Broner slides, weaves under the jab, tries to slide off the ropes, but again, left hand low. And he did roll, semi-roll with the shot. He didn't take it the full brunt of it because he did roll with it some, somewhat, but it was still a landing shot. And again, if you look at this in real time, it looks like it landed flush. And the judges, again, look at this judge here. He's very excited. It looks like the punch landed. Landed. So that right there is letting the judges know who's doing the work, right? That's ring generalship 101 right there. Putting pressure, taking away the other guy's offense, cutting the ring off, putting him where you want to put him, and landing shots. That's <laughs> that's winning the fight right there. All right, so now we're going to look here. Garcia again, using his head movement, fainting, fainting, making Broner react, parrying the jab, and then he goes on the attack. 
beautiful combination beautiful control let's take a look at that in slow motion because maybe you know real time we didn't really see from that angle if the shots landed so let's take a look at whether the punches land so first garcia nice tight right hand look how he lifts the elbow up and turns the punch over trying to pierce that guard right now Broner leans back he's squared up garcia again loads up on the left foot you can see Broner's elbow tucking in to block that shot again garcia getting a lot of torque into the punch he uses his left hand and steps to his right to cut off any escape routes keeps using that left hand to control then loads up on another left hook and this but see how he he faints as if he's about to go to to the body again but instead comes up with a left hook upstairs and it lands you see that it pierced the guard boom 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 pierces the guard right hand left hand controls right to the body and see Broner was putting that elbow down not to block it but he still got through behind the elbow and then right away he's still controlling Broner with the left and comes back loads up on the right uppercut wham left hand and then a right hook that again behind the guard right on the jaw there boom and Broner is there and he shakes his head again saying no that didn't hurt what does that tell you? So that was just a little mini film analysis to let you guys see a little taste of what Mikey Garcia does and what makes him so good and so effective as a boxer. Yes, he's not as the flashiest boxer out there. And as he goes up in weight, I don't think we're going to be seeing him knocking out people like he used to at 126 and 130 pounds. He still has very good power because of his precision striking and, the, and his technique, the fact that he sits down on his shots. But, um, you know, he's not like a Danny Golovkin or uh, Sergey Kovalev type puncher, but he's a pretty decent puncher and he's got the skills to back it up. Against Bronner, you saw him cutting off the ring, something he's not really used to. You saw him going to the body more, so he's he does it all, man. He can move the head, he can parry. Defensively, he's good. Offensively, he can put together some good shots, some good combinations. Doesn't telegraph his shots all that much, so definitely excited to see Mike Garcia in against. It's going to take a, a big, tough guy on his level or above a guy like Terence Croft or Lomachenko or maybe somebody that we still haven't seen or heard of that's just as good as him because the guys like Sergei Lipinitz or Lipinitz I forget how you say his name you know he's, he's a good fighter but he hasn't shown us anything that indicates that he's on the Mikey Garcia level so guys that was another PDA film analysis um I can't catch everything that goes on in a fight. So if you guys have any suggestions or you saw something that I missed in that video, please leave it in the comments. I want to really hear what you people have to say, what you saw, something that I missed. I'm here to learn as well. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget we do a, a podcast, live podcast every Saturday from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time. Leave your suggestions. We'll see you on the next one. My goodness, I fucked that one up at the end. We'll see you on the next one, folks. Take care.